This is the multiple regression module in variable selection. For variable selection application, the primary research question is which, out of a potentially large group of variables, are the strongest predictors of the outcome. Although you might have some preconceived notion about which of these predictors matters the most, you haven't subdivided them into primary versus secondary. Instead, we'll let the data decide. The biggest danger in a variable selection application is that you'll overstate how well your model predicts the outcome. In essence, this is another manifestation of the phenomenon. The more you look, the more statistically significant results you'll tend to see, whether or not there's anything real going on. Within this context, the more analytical steps that rely on p-values to make decisions, the greater is the risk of overstating a model's performance. There are various ap approaches to that variable selection, and none are consistently better than the others. Basically, you can perform a forward selection, which first tries all the one predictor models to identify the strongest single predictor of outcome, then tries all two single two predictor models that include this first predictor, and eventually adds a second. Then we try all three predictor models, including these first two, and so forth. Backward selection throws the process into reverse. It starts with all the predictors, and then it drops those one at a time. And there are versions where you can go forward for a while and backwards for a, for a while. And all the methods have criteria for stopping. For example, when the next predictor to be added or subtracted isn't statistically significant. At each step, the workhorse is the partial F test. The only thing that differs from step to step is the variables that correspond to the full and reduced models. Using auto automated software can be dangerous, especially in those situations where some human judgment is required. For example, if two variables are almost equally predictive, but one is more expensive to collect than the other, it might make sense to override the computer default, computer's default selection and go with the cheaper variable. For another example, you never want to drop a main effect in a model that has interaction terms that includes that variable. This principle isn't necessarily something that your software will understand. Because variable selection applications often start with more variables than do adjustment applications, the problems associated with missing values can be particularly acute. It's always good to start an analysis with an assessment of the pattern of missing values. This is discussed elsewhere. Depending upon how an analysis is performed, dropping a variable for consideration might mean that the number of eligible patients changes. This would be the case if there are some patients whose only missing value values were on the variable in question. Having different patients and different analyses can be a mess. One way to make sure that you're working with the same set of patients throughout the analysis is to begin by creating a subset of patients with complete data on all the variables in the analysis. That data set is notably smaller than the overall sample. It's time to look at the pattern of missing values with particular care. Here's a strategy that I often use. For continuous outcomes, begin by limiting the number of potential predictors to no more than one per 10 patients. Without looking at the relationship between the predictors and the outcome, determine whether any of the predictors need to be dropped or combined into indices. Missing values are one reason for taking action. Another reason is the lack of variation. For example, if 99% of patients in a VA data set are males, then gender is a natural candidate for being excluded. I also check for highly correlated predictors, which are discussed in another module. Conceptual model is helpful for determining which variables should be combined. Particular variables that pertain to the same construct can often be treated similarly, by, for example, by being combined into a single index. Next step in the strategy is to use the conceptual model to define, divide potential predictors in the category of unimportant, minimally important, and important. Subdivide the important variables into those that must be included in all models and those that might potentially be dropped. Uh, you're empowered to, for to completely forget about the unimportant predictors. Then, we'll test the minimally important predictors as a group. Specifically, we use a partial F test whose model has all the important variables plus all the minimally important variables, and its reduced model contains the important variables only probably the group of unimportant variables will be non-significant, in which case you can note this and then forget about them. If they do happen to be significant as a group, perform a forward selection procedure to determine which of the variables are causing the significance. 
keep those in the model. Uh, and when you do this test, keep the important variables in the model while doing so. What this strategy does is to protect you from falsely positive results among the unimportant predictors. The data still have a chance to override your implicit assumption that the unimportant variables don't matter, but you'll have to speak loudly to do so. Next, use a backward selection strategy to see whether any of the important variables can be dropped. Any predictors that you've declared should be included. All matters, all, the, all models, no matter what, can't be dropped, so you might have to perform this backward selection manually. You'll eventually end up with a final model. The last step is to validate this model. How to do so is described elsewhere. This slide presents some sample text for a statistical method section. In essence, it, it describes a set of steps. Ideally, it could also include the rationale for placing each of the potential variables into their respective groups. We'll highlight the final, the, the final uh, bullet point, which is that variable selection strategies run, run the risk of overstating model performance, so some form of model validation is required.